Hey folks, today we are taking a look at Masterpiece Optimus Prime, otherwise known as the MP-10 Optimus Prime Masterpiece figure. Now, I did get this thing off of Toys R Us .com. Unfortunately, my Toys R Us, my local Toys R Us, didn't have any in stock until the, guy, until the day this guy arrived in, in the mail. Poetic justice, I tell you. Now, to give you guys an example of just the size of this box itself, here is FOC Prime, FOC Deluxe Prime. This box is, or this container is huge. I mean, this thing is just enormous, but that, it's got to be in order to house Prime, the trailer, and his accessories. As you can see, it does come with a matrix of leadership, roller, a spike figure, his gun, his Energon Axe, and obviously Prime himself. Just turning the thing to the side, we get a look at Prime, and on the back, we get everything that the figure can do. Opening the matrix, opening up the chest, we have the matrix, this weird repair bay, uh, semi-mode, him with the axe, on the side, more artwork, and there's nothing on the bottom at all. So, I'm going to go ahead and open this thing up for you, because I don't believe anybody has done an unboxing of this set. Getting into this thing is not particularly all that challenging, but I can guarantee you that there's going to be a lot of box here. So just using a pair of scissors to get into it first. Get into the top here and slide out the tiny tray. So the only thing inside is this stand, which, is there anything in there? No. So that's it for the container. I'm just pulling the slide out from the back of the container to see if there are any directions hidden in there. Nope, nothing in there. So in the tray we've got the figures and his accessories, so I doubt there's going to be a twist tie holding the trailer, but let's turn it around. So, okay, got a twist tie on the axe, twist tie on the gun, twist tie on roller and spike, and then Prime himself has one, two, three, four, five twist ties. So uh, I will go ahead and uh, make short work of, work of them. The trailer is actually held together, or held in, with these plastic pieces that are taped down. So once you get those pieces off, it comes out of the tray with no problems. Now that we've got Prime out of his box, let's take a look out at his accessories really quickly. First, we're going to take a look at is the little spike figure, and I'm just trying to get the camera to autofocus here. This is actually a pretty detailed figure, except for the face. He has no face! Posability-wise, uh, he's actually pretty poseable. He's got some nice joints in the legs. He's got two joints in the legs and then one in the arm, and his head does not move, but it's just supposed to sit inside Prime and sit inside Roller, but he has no eyes! Okay, speaking of Roller! Roller! We have a Roller! Nice quality plastic. He can hold Prime's gun by opening up this back and lift and flipping this section around so he can hold Prime's gun very nicely. And just nice little roller figure. I've always loved roller. I've always wanted roller to have a better figure than just a little six-wheeled cart thingy. With a little light. Unfortunately, it doesn't light up. I wish it did. That would be awesome. It just, it looks like it's supposed to have a battery, but it would be so cool if that lit up. Whoop. His axe is... His traditional Energon axe, though, I don't remember in the G1, in G1, his axe having spikes. And you just put the axe over his fist. That's all you really do. And that's it. That's all you do. Let's just put the axe over his fist. I actually like that, doing that, much better than folding up the fist. Oops, forgot to get a twist tie off here. So, he looks good with the axe. It just pops, it does pop off very easily off of uh, the base, so that is something you do have to be wary of. This does pop off way too easily, in my opinion. 
I mean, that just comes right off, so be careful of that. So with roller again, you can fit uh, the little spike figure in the, in the roller, like that. Last but not least is Prime's gun, and I'm a little bit dismayed that there weren't any directions in the box, because it feels like this thing, this transforms and collapses and everything, which, ah, it does, yes. So this is to uh, fit into Prime's backpack, and it is spring-loaded. So there we go, just get it all lined up, like that. So I believe that fits into his back. And I would be right. So, yep, he could store his gun in his back. Very, very cool. I love that. I absolutely love that. And then you could bring it out, and when you're ready for him to use it, push the button, and bam, he's got his cannon. So cool. Next, we're going to take a look at Prime's trailer, and this is, this is nice. It's also pretty heavy. I mean, this is about a pound, so it is a pretty heavy trailer. It's just fantastic detailing all around. You've got taillights, a rear grill. You've even got uh, a door, doors that open like a trailer would, and then inside you've got a gate or a, uh, a trailer ramp. That is very cool. Unfortunately, there's no hitch that folds down, but you do have these supporters on the side that, as you swing them out, they fold out, so they're on a gear. I don't know how well that's coming across, but see, as you turn it out, it'll deploy down. That's very, very cool and very, very useful. So that's cool. The detailing on the bottom plastic is just amazing. It's very well done. It's very, very, very nice. Oh, and yes, there are things that fold down. There we go. So we can just fold those bits up. There we go. Yeah, there we. There it is. So then we'll deploy the side parts again because what we're going to do is open her up. Just like the original G1 figure, opens up nicely. Pull out the ramp. Deploy the robotic dude with the claw. The claw. So he can turn any which way you want. Little radar dish. I think there are there were supposed to be missiles that went there, but I don't have any. So let's see. It looks like the inner detailing is really nice. You can have uh, your spikes sit here or here. That's very, very cool. Just very awesome. Just very, very awesome. It's nice to have, uh, or nice to see the G1 style of Prime again. Unfortunately, it does not appear that there is a little, there is a launching gimmick. That I would have liked to have seen, but oh well. <laughs> Looks pretty darn cool to me. Something else that I missed that I can show you is this opens up and you can actually just have Spike sit in here. If, you, if you're afraid that you're going to lose Spike, he can sit right in here with no problems. So that is a very nice addition. Also, according to the directions, these seats, this seat folds down, which it does, and this seat folds down, which it does. And the reason they fold down is so you can store Prime's weapons. So you can store his axe on this side and his gun on this side, which I'll show you now. So here we have Prime's repair bay mode, and this mode was never shown in the show, but it is very cool, and it was shown in the original toys. So we've got his gun and his axe, and then the um, robot to do the repairs. 
reaching down below. As you can see, there's uh, not much else going on. It's a great way to display the figure if you don't want to pose him, but I guess this would be a really good way to put de de deploy, or I'm sorry, display the, um, oh, what is it, the dead or dying uh, MP10 Prime, the black and gray repaint of this figure. It's not a bad idea, actually. Another great use for Roller is while you have Prime de deployed in robot mode, you can actually use Roller as a surrogate driver for, for this. So we fold those up, and this double hinge piece will go right into that spot that, on, that is on the back of Roller. So you can have Roller actually pulling his trailer. So this might explain where the trailer keeps going. Uh, the only issue I do have is that it, once you get Roller on here, it looks a little weird. I'm not going to lie. That, that just looks a little silly. But it would explain where the trailer keeps going. It just Roller is with it off to the side somewhere. So also what we can do uh, with the trailer is we can open it up again. And, oh man, it does not open easily. It is not easily opened. But you do have to push from like right, from this point right here, which will unlatch some pieces. And then what we do is that those pieces, we could fold them down and in. I don't want to break it. Lift it up. Get it lined up. And then have the command center sitting on top of the trailer. Or the uh, command center cannon. So here we have the command center canopy sitting on top of the trailer, just like the G1 figure was able to do. A nice addition. Not completely practical, mind you, but a nice addition nonetheless. But for the trailer, the real question on everybody's mind is, can this thing hold a Countach? That would be yes. Yes, it can indeed hold a Countach. Now, this is the one point where I wish there was a little launcher mechanism. <laughs> yes. Optimus can, can, Optimus can, in fact, carry a Lamborghini. What about Prime himself, you might ask? Well, this thing is pretty darn good. We'll start off with talking about uh, the overall look of the figure. It's clean, it's crisp, and I have to say, I like this styling for the robot mode better than the original Masterpiece figure. My main complaint, and you just saw it there, this hinge right here at his foot is incredibly loose on both feet. I'm going to take a screwdriver to it later to see if I can't tighten it up, but it is very loose. The figure is a little top-heavy, but it's proportionally top-heavy. It's not crazy. The figure is actually, I think, lighter than the, um, than the trailer, which is surprising. Though the feel of the figure is good. It's a nice, good quality plastic, and it feels good. Posability wise is really quite really really good head is on a swivel and a ball joint Shoulders I could move out a little bit to give you more articulation, but they're on hinge and double hinge joints There's a swivel just above the elbow the elbow bends at a good full 90 degrees fists rotate hands are articulated somewhat they're kind of like Gundam hands where the bottom three fingers are just on a single hinge and then the trigger finger is on a double hinge. Thumb does not move. As you can see he has no problem holding his ion cannon. I will just remove the ion cannon. This is actually kind of a pain in the butt to get into his hands as I have popped, I don't know if you could see it there, but the plastic on the hinge on his trigger finger is a little marred already from just me moving it. Legs Nice tight ratchet, and then a hinge, a swivel, two, nope, no, just one swivel under the knee, and the knee is on a ratchet that bends just about 90 degrees. Feet are on two different hinge joints. So you can get some really nice posability. Oh, and there is a torso joint as well. Forgot about that. So you can get some really nice poses out of this guy. 
But like I said, that is going to be your biggest problem is this joint right here, which I definitely should take a screwdriver to to see if I can tighten that up a little bit. The face is perfectly sculpted. In fact, I think this is a better sculpt than the Japanese figure. Not a better sculpt. I'm sorry, that's not correct. A better paint job than the Japanese figure. I've seen the Japanese figure in, in person, and it's good. But I like the American one better for some reason. So also, you can open up his chest, and forgive the, uh, there are some remnants of plastic in there from him being held in place. Then you can flip up these components here, and if I could just get my finger in there to deploy the matrix. And to get the matrix out, you just push on it, and it'll lift out, and then fall out. And this sucker is heavy. This has got to be... This sucker is heavy, but it is shiny. It looks so good. Oh, man, I wish I had a full-sized version of this thing. And it's got light piping, which I'm going to show you uh, the light piping here in just a second. Forgive the bright light, but look at the light piping. It's got awesome light piping. For size comparison, here is the original 20th Anniversary Prime with the current Masterpiece Prime. As you can see, there is a size difference, and this one has a lot more metal than this guy does. So let's go ahead and get into the transformation. To start off with, we are going to put the arms to the sides and lift them up, then come underneath and open up these panels underneath his hand, on his forearms and flip his fists into them like that. So we end up with pieces like these sticking out. Which is a little disingenuous considering uh, his transformation in the show. Those became his lights, like that. Next we're going to take the legs and there are panels inside here, like here that we're going to flip and fold into the inside of his legs. So take these front panels, and flip and fold them in, and then they will attach to one another. And then we push on the, whoops, and then we want to retract the legs. To do that, we have to push the gas cans up, and that should, oh, I'm sorry, not the gas cans, these uh, buttons back here on the back of his legs will free his legs up so we can push them and collapse them in like that. Now that we've got Midget Prime formed, we're going to take the gas cans, fold them up, and snap them into his torso, into these little holes in his torso, like that. Then we'll turn the entirety of his legs around, thusly. Then we'll take the things that are covering the wheel wells and fold them in and underneath. And kudos to the designers of this mold because they covered up the wheels, which I greatly appreciate. Then we'll take the feet and collapse the feet like that. So we've got the tail lights pointing out. Then take the whole front of the figure and we're supposed to be able to detach this whole section, but first we have to open up his chest and fold out this grill. And when you try to fold the grill out, you're going to push the entire unit up and out like this. Next, we want to pull it up, and then there's a double hinge, so we want to bring that forward. And that'll actually snap into place like that and snap that, this piece, into the grip, into what was his stomach grill. Now, once we've got everything to this point, this is where things get a little weird. Take the parts that form his abdomen and fold them out, and you can finally remove uh, the plastic bits, which I forgot to do the first time I transformed him. So once you have these folded out like this, we're going to want to take these pieces and fold out the silver bits on both sides like that. So fold that down and fold out these silver bits. And then fold 
these sections around like this, so they're pointing down, fold up this silver section, and fold up the matrix compartment section. Arr, come on. And then bring the whole that whole bit down. When you do that, you can bring these sections around. Take the head and fold the head in like that. Then we can close the front like that. Fold the arms, slide the arms up and into the back of the figure like this. And slide them around and just get everything back into place like that. And then finally, we can fold up these sections, just get them into place, get that latched in. So do the same over here, fold that up, peg it in, fold that, peg it in, and just get everything lined up and reattached if anything came apart. And there we go. So here Optimus is in vehicle mode. Now, how does he compare to his 20th anniversary version? He's a bit smaller, yeah. But I think the new version, the MP10, I think this is a more show-accurate piece. Attached to the trailer, MP10 is probably the most accurate Optimus we will ever get. I mean, this is... This is superb. This, this figure is just blown me away in all sense of the word. It just, it looks fantastic and it looks more cohesive than the MP01 ever did in vehicle mode. And as you can see, Spike fits neatly inside Prime's cabin. Though it is a little weird that, his, that Spike is sitting right next to his head. Masterpiece Optimus Prime, or MP10 Prime, is just about a perfect figure. I can find almost nothing wrong with it other than the weird issue with the, with the ankles. That's it. It's got a near-perfect transformation. It's not nearly as complicated or as annoying as MP01s. The robot mode is fantastic. And the overall look and the value proposition of what you're getting is phenomenal. Guys, you need to have this in your collection. I don't care if you're not a G1 fan. This is by far the best Prime figure ever. That's it. Get it. Christmas is coming up. It's a Toys R Us exclusive right now, but just get it. This, this needs to be in your collection.